And there it goes. Off into the abyss of the Colton Yard. Hmm. Made it to <clears throat> San Bernardino, California. Up here at the main um, passenger train station, which is also the main yard here in San Bernardino proper for BNSF. Uh, yeah. Just hung out with a guy named Brian who's been watching my videos for a long time. Shout out to Brian. He gave me all of these beers and like four Clamatos, which lets you know he's an attentive viewer because I love Clamatos. A lovely morning in uh, San Bernardino, California. That was home last night. This is burned out. Single room, old house. It looks like it burned out pretty recently too. But yeah, I just hung out here and uh, drank some Clamato and ate some weird, super spicy ramen that destroyed my stomach. Thanks, Brian. And, uh, yeah. Now I'm just killing some time. Alright! A windy evening here in California. Uh, three punk-ass kids just attempted to rob me at gunpoint. Trainside's down in Woodstock, Alabama, and I look out the side, and we'll be able to sit right out there on the mattress. I'm like, you motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Tim rode trains for a long time, hard. He's been more places than me for sure. But he uh, hit me up online and wanted to put me up for a night and meet me. Apparently he thinks I'm a celebrity or something. You are a celebrity. <laughs> you are a celebrity. I, I have 2,000 subscribers, motherfucker. Well, in a strange turn of events, I find myself at an Arco in a vehicle out near Palm Springs. I really can't talk about it right now a whole lot because uh, it's a pretty tense moment right now. Some shit just went down and it's been going down for three days, really. And uh, yeah, I'll explain more later, but I'm in a car right now and I'm going to the middle of the Sonoran Desert, well south of Phoenix. We'll talk later. for me and not because I'm anywhere close to where I was going or because this worked out at all how I thought it would <clears throat> so story is I guess I'll start from the beginning two three nights ago now in uh, the greater San Bernardino area around the Colton yard the diamond um, I was hanging out around like 9, 10, uh, had all my stuff unpacked, and you know, admittedly was in a very poorly lit area, actually like an entirely dark area, um, about 40 yards from the main street, and long story short, some uh, three little uh, Latino kids 
couldn't have been older than like 23, 22, <coughs> came walking by me and uh, started throwing rocks at me uh, from a ways away. And then at one point they turned back around and I tried to start packing up my gear to get out of there. Uh, but they came moving over real quick and one just pulled a gun right away, right off the bat. Put it to my face and demanded all my gear and my backpack and everything. And I thought about it for a minute. I was sitting on the ground at this point, too, leaning up against my pack. And all three of them were standing over me. One of them had a knife. And, uh, uh, yeah, I just said no. It's <laughs> like, you know, no, everything I have in here, I need to survive. And you are going to shoot me over it. Um, and, you know, uh, I think pretty much immediately after I said no, <laughs> one of them one of the other ones grabbed my full beer off of the ground in front of me and just smashed it over my head. And that hurt pretty good. Uh, so they kept demanding my stuff and I just said no and put everything I could underneath my arm. I think they made away with two clamatos or two chiladas, which is pretty sad. But uh, I just walked away to the nearest street and they followed me there, yelling. And so anyway, after that, I was a little shook from that and started walking out of that area, you know, going like, playing like going a good mile and a half away and ran into this kid, another train rider in front of the grocery store late at night, told him what had happened and given what had happened, I decided I'd stick with him for the night. And we went and uh, crashed out somewhere. He had a dog too, who was really good at uh, guarding, you know, he, was very alert, stayed up all night for us pretty much. And split ways with him, went to go hang out with uh, that cool guy Tim. <laughs> that wasn't sarcastic. <laughs> and um, yeah, ended up going back down to the yard today and found him again and met him. And he was like, hey, you want to ride to Tucson? I said, okay, fine, you know, I'm going to Tucson. Well, I thought he meant the train, and he meant, no, car. I was like, a car? Well, okay, you know, it's cool. We'll be there by the end of the day. <clears throat> so I hop in this car, and away we go. A questionable choice, I will tell you right now, and I knew that then. But I thought, man, if I can just get there, or even better, in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking they could drop me off at this spot in the middle of nowhere I'm trying to go to out in Arizona for a uh, special event this weekend that I would otherwise not be able to make it for. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, away we go. Uh, ended up a bunch of shenanigans at the Walmart in Beaumont, California. Uh, they told me the lights don't work on their car <laughs> after we got about 30, 40 miles from LA. And so that meant we only had about three hours to drive at that point. Um, and then a, uh, how do I word this delicately and properly? A, there was a dispute between the driver of the car and uh, the guy I'd been hanging out with. And I'm leaving names out. Um, and it ended with him getting kicked out of the car near Palm Springs and me being well you know nowhere near a freight train kind of just kept my mouth shut hoping to stay on board and not get booted from the car too <clears throat> so in the end of it all uh, it was a pretty stressful moment you know um, it was a minute where I was worried about violence and ultimately in the end of it all got away from the situation. I am still with the vehicle and the driver of the vehicle. He was a very cool person. Um, and in my opinion was not treated well. So I'm still with them. Obviously we can't go anywhere because it's fucking dark now. We don't have any stupid headlights. Um, so yeah. This uh, rest stop here in Cactus City, California is going to be home for the night. We'll see how I fare sleeping out on the ground at Cactus City.
At least it ain't Colton. the border into the great state of Arizona. destination. The train tracks running through the heart of the Sonoran Desert National Monument. And I, I was just telling my co-pilot here, or actually the pilot. I'm the captain now. <laughs> that uh, a long time ago in the early days of doing land management trail work stuff, I worked out here and we camped, you know, not even a few miles up the road right here on the left. And I remember sitting over here at camp every night after work, just watching the trains go by, longing me. Back in those days, I'd come down here and work for three months, and then uh, head out to somewhere else, so it was always kind of hard for me to tie down. But anyway, it's all real cool and nostalgic, and this is some beautiful, beautiful country. Itchy foot Stetson. Yeah, he died. Hmm. Oh, um, damn it, this is funny. Because I hopped a train with him once from Minneapolis to the Marchant. That must have been a hoot. Yeah, yeah. Is there a cutter you guys are biting? Bite. Bite. I, I got a cutter, but I don't know off here where it is. <laughs> and I don't feel like looking for it. I think your teeth are faster and quicker. Just, come on, do it, do it, do it. He's right there, and, uh, 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 and I was grunting and grunting, and instead of farting, you like a little couch. turd comes out of my ass, and it goes back in like a fucking snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Ziggy sees right there looking at it with the flashlight that far away, and he goes, oh, and he jumps back and hits his head on a fucking closet door and Ernie just starts rolling on the ground. He is just rolling on the ground and laughing. This is Mark Charles. What the fuck happened? I don't know what happened. And they told me later. That Marks just, are brown and they go back in. The yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know a fucking turd could do that. Like, I saw it shadow. It's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's a snake tongue. Yeah. It was, it was, it was it Pucks and Tawny Phil. Four weeks and Pucks yeah. and Phil. Yeah. No. Anyway, oh, all right, heading out. Had a good night with the uh, combat rail fans in Arizona. Now it's time to get over to Tucson and get back on the train.
just landed here in Tucson finally in the car. Uh, had a real good time yesterday and now I'm heading down to the yard. I think I'm gonna go to Nogales. That's been the plan uh, up until now. But I don't know if I were to be able to find a northbound junk train to Phoenix, maybe I'd get on that too. storm out here. So here we have a train, uh, Taking the southbound track to Nogales. Unfortunately, it's about half an hour from sunset, as I'm sure you can tell. So I'm just not even gonna consider riding this one. Anytime I do a new line, the goal is definitely to ride it in the day. So, hanging out tonight, found a pretty good spot to be, and uh, yeah, I've been told that the Nogales trains will be coming in in the early a.m. So right now, I figure I've got time, I ain't gonna ride it if it's dark either way. Damn it. I fucked this one up. I totally could have caught that train if I had been where I were earlier and I thought I might need to move and I was totally wrong. There goes another one. It was only like eight cars. I had no opportunity. I wanted to do it in the daytime. But I think I'm about to just get on this train and go to Nogales. Why the fuck not? De colores. Son los 
los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Off here about not even half a mile from the uh, scanner for the border crossing. Nogales. Haven't been here in a long time. <laughs> 